It's disorganized play. Hey everyone, hi. I'm your host. I'm your host with a dying mouse here. My mouse battery tells me it's on its last legs. Yes, I have a mouse that uses a battery. Hi everyone, welcome to Disorganized Play, our special Gen Con 50 preview edition, 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 edition. Gerber, 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 gerber. Um, it's Gen Con. It is sort of, uh, it's a, uh, what's the proper context to describe Gen Con? It's a, a gathering of nerds that is un, unparalleled in really many, many, well, you know, it's, I don't, it's so specific, right? It's such a specific event. It's a role-playing, uh, it's a role-playing games event, but there is some cosplay, there is some, some board gaming. It's a big D&D &D thing, right? <clears throat> Uh, it's something that I've been attending for the past 32 years. It's my Jesus year at Gen Con. This is number 33. Went to everyone in Milwaukee. Been to everyone in Indianapolis. Pry my brain apart and devour the innards, nerds. All right. Um, hey, I know that uh, not everybody can go. And I, I will say that's one of the ways that Gen Con has changed, right? I mean, not that everybody could go before. But as the con has, like, expanded, just, you know, uh, <laughs> blossomed with attendance, the price has gone up, the difficulty in getting a room has gone up, uh, it's, you know, it's more crowded, it's more slammed, all of the pizza places are slammed, all of the restaurants at the wrong hour are slammed, etc., etc., etc. So the first thing I want to tell you at the top of this stream is don't feel bad for not going. Certainly we all have that fear of missing out syndrome, right? That, uh, <clears throat> that, that keeps us in the Kickstarter loop. But, um... It's going to be okay. You'll be able to live vicariously through Twitter or whatever. Nobody who goes is going to be able to do everything cool. Even if they're actually there. Myself included. So it's four days to celebrate, but hopefully you have a local con that is just as much fun, although on a different scale. Or maybe you can go to your local con and make it that like have that fun special con experience that you couldn't otherwise have uh locally here in los angeles we have three of them that uh are all gaining more traction i'm also a fan of big bad con up in the oakland area in terms of the west coast but then there's a, there's a ton of regional cons that you can go to if you really want a great big giant con experience like gen con you could also go to one of the packs uh, events, or you could go to the board game Geek Con down in Texas, depending upon like what flavor of nerditude you want to indulge in. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Game Hole Con in Wisconsin. So I'm here to tell you, they've sold out. It's all right. If you didn't make it, or you can't make it, or you can't go, it's okay. I know that like there's a big like nerd push, like let's get everybody hyped about Gen Con, Gen Con exclusives, and Gen Con this and that. <clears throat> and part of that is just an uh, artifact of our industry. That's the way things have been for our industry. Um, and I say this as someone who loves Gen Con and has been, for the vast majority of my life, attending every year. Um, but it's okay. It'll be okay if you can't make it. You're going to get by. So let's talk about a few things. Uh, let's go through our agenda for today. If you have any questions or whatever, um, just you know, feel free to, to kind of uh, machine gun them out there. I don't have, like, this, I do have an agenda today, but it's not super tight. So if you have, uh, if you have a, a, a question or something that, or a tip that you want to share, go ahead and throw it. I'll try and watch chat as I do. Yeah, you can do all 19,000 events. You can just do it. Just try. I, all right, I'm going to throw this tip out there, which is I think 
Like, my biggest tip is that you can't game as much as you want to game. That's my, maybe not my number one tip, but that's in my, not like my top ten, is you physically cannot game as much as you will want to. You just can't. You will, unless, <laughs> unless you're 19 or 23 or whatever, and you have no obligations on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday following the con, you can't go on a four-day caffeine fuel fueled gaming bender and if you want to do that do that with your friends because i will say as the grumpy old man that i'm becoming that i don't want to play with somebody who's strung out on a sugar crash not enough sleep smells bad can't pay attention is falling asleep when it's not their turn and when it is their turn you need to recap everything that's been happening for them i don't that's that is, you are not being a responsible gamer when you put yourself through that. But it's fine to put yourself through that if you want. You're putting everybody else through it too. And that's the part where your lack of discipline and ability to focus impacts my ability to have fun at the table. So, that's, um, I mean... Gaming benders, like, I, I get it, um, DJ Regular says, I didn't like it, and I, and we've, you know, uh, 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 you know, it's good to have a buffer the day before, day after. I, I, I mean, I recall those times fondly, but I don't maybe have the, the, I guess, you know, here's the thing. When I think of the gaming benders that I went on, we didn't, when I was in high school and we were playing D&D a lot, we didn't so much have gaming benders as we had sort of like a series of wind sprints, right? So it wasn't that we would play D&D &D for 36 hours in a row and just like, ah, it's so amazing. What we would do is we would play D&D &D for six hours in a row, four times a week, you know, like just day after day, like, okay, now, all right, guys, let's play again, you know? And eventually at two or three in the morning, everybody fell asleep and they all woke up around nine or 10 o'clock. And then, at 10 or 11, you had some pancakes and uh, thought about going outside and kind of looked at the table and went, do ah, right. you want to start playing again? I don't know. Let's, let's have some lunch. Let's play some video games and then maybe we'll come back to it. So it wasn't so much that we gamed for a huge block of time in a row as we gamed a lot. Like we were able to churn through an adventure because we would just go hard at it four days four or five days in a row <clears throat> those are the times that i remember fondly because i was actually awake and paying attention 130 came around and i was like I don't know. is this a d12 or d20 i don't know all right <clears throat> so there you go uh our topics today the numbers packing etiquette self-care games shopping list well why is that last it should be first right that's what we're all here for yeah 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 <laughs> all right uh, let me run through the com the comments quick um yeah it's tough being an adult you guys that's that's what we've all learned uh okay yes yeah so Pace yourselves. Pace yourselves. Mr. Mike Shea is in the house. Hello, Mr. Sly Flourish. How are you? I'm looking forward to whatever uh, DMing advice uh, column you are working on. It looks like you're doing some hardcore research. So, <clears throat> oh, quiz question. Mike Shea says, you may have covered this in other material and can aim it towards me, but how do you prepare for a game if you only have 30 minutes? All right. So I have a question about this. Do you mean preparing for like an Adventures League game where you have to like, you have prepared material that you have to get them through? Or do you mean, oh, hey, you know what? Hey, we'd love to run a game. Uh, what do you get? What do you got? What do you got in your backpack? What do you, what are you going to play? Can you, can you run something for us? Like an impromptu off the cuff where maybe there's no pre-gens, there's no, um, there's no prepared material that you have to like hit the high points for. That would be my question. I'll try to I'll try to cover them both quick. Um, so, if you're going to run an Adventurers League game and you only have thirty seconds to prep it, there's always a string of kind of like uh, there, there's some encounters that seem optional or it just seems like a combat filler encounter. Try and cut those out. There's typically like sort of like 
uh, introductory encounter, you can always trim that way down. So don't get too bogged down in what the intro is and the long scene that comes ahead of time. Those things are always uh, overwritten a little bit, right? Um, and then lately they have had a series of... Um, a, a, a key design mechanic in Adventurers League, which uh, I I more or less took advantage with the the latest thing that I wrote, um, is it's a series of optional encounters. Pick three of the following things that happen during the journey to the Forbidden Tower or whatever it is. Right. Well, you can usually eyeball those pretty quickly and go, not interesting. No, not. Nah, mm, uh, uh. So you always pair. See if you can scan through the thing and just pair through what are the core plot elements. In my experience, Adventurers League adventures are always overwritten. Uh, there's always more material than you can cover in three and a half hours. So squeeze it down, wring the juice out of it, and then skip stuff that just seems like it's just a combat encounter. That's, that's my number one piece of advice because those things take up a lot of time. And, and they don't require a lot of attention from you as the DM, so you can drop them in if you're running ahead of schedule, but not knowing, okay, well, these I need to understand these five rooms that happen at the end of the adventure. Get those down. So just learn to, like, quick, get your editing pen out and hit the, like, circle the highlights. we got to do this, we got to do this, got to do this. And you, you, as a DM, you can always pad out the playtime with... And, uh, with a, a guard encounter. There's always some sort of combat encounter in there that is honestly extraneous. So you can always pad it out with that, or you can pad it out with role-playing and create a role-playing encounter out of the material at hand that will help you fill out the time. So don't be afraid to just mercilessly cut those things. So that is my advice on prepping an Adventurers League game, is, uh, you know, make sure you have your monster manual with you so that or or the other the other thing that i will do just keep this in mind is rip those pages out of the back that have all the monster stats in them just rip those out and have those at hand so that you don't have to flip back and forth flip back and forth flip back and forth so i think i think a, a, a sort of a standalone adventurers league thing that's not like an epic or something like that, you can prep in 30 minutes if you work at it. You're under the gun, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of doing an impromptu game, I'm, uh, I'm a fan of Danger Patrol. Danger Patrol does not require any prep on your part other than you need to have it with you. So you need a bag full of dice. It would be helpful if you had the character sheets. But you don't have to prep a scenario, and it's one of those games that you can find a way to reach the conclusion without having, you know, in whatever time constraint that you have. So I like, I like Danger Patrol because it, so much of the lore and the world is jointly created with the players. Um, that's a John Harper game. Nobody's surprised that I mentioned a John Harper game. Uh, I like, uh, so Zero Scale Loping Bastard says I used a hacked version of Dusk City Outlaws to rerun a Shadowrun game I've run a couple times before. That is a great tip. There's no reason you can't cheat and pull out a plot that you've used before. That is a great tip. Unless the players have played it already... If you've had an original scenario, use that same premise. So that is uh, that is happy. Uh, I'm trying to think what I mean. There's there's a lot of different options. I'm just trying to think of what what quick little pickup games I would sit down and like to play. So the other thing that I would recommend is um, what is I uh, <laughs> there's a set of cards. I'm going to go get them. I'm still here, you guys. All right. So, 
there is there is a set of cards put out by Evil Hat, and just as a disclaimer for those of you who don't know, I do social media for Evil Hat, so take whatever I you want as a you know grain of salt. But uh, there's a set of cards called "It's Not My Fault I'm Fantastic." It's not my fault that I'm fa I'm fantastic. It comes with. Oh, you're looking at the wrong side. All right. <laughs> It comes with a bunch of different cards here, right? There is a deck of character type cards. And they have they these cover all different sorts of fantasy tropes. Vampire, zombie, Nephilim, Minotaur, Merfolk, and then it lists it lists careful, flashy, quick, what they are, right? And it lists some quick fate stats on the card. Yes, yes. Okay. These are sort of how to build a dungeon type cards, right? So so on the one hand, it has like your you can quick build a character by flipping these cards over, right? I'm you know, and and the, and kind of the idea is there's also a type attached to it. So you could do like demon spawn. I'm a demon spawn minotaur. Okay. So these are these are your inspiration for your character for your for your for your characters to play. Then <laughs> there's a set of blue cards. These are called Where Are You Now cards. Where mm -mm, Where are you now? And it has things on it, like, in a cavern large enough to hold a city, lit only by a dim purple glow. Oh, and there's also a city. Where are you now? In the sea of astral space, tethered to your physical form by a silver cord. Right? So those are bits of inspiration where you are now. The next set of cards is, what brought you to this? You're not quite sure what the nine-foot-tall thing with the club is saying, but the two-foot person with the wings seems to think it's a challenge to a duel. What brought you to this? A flash flood. So this is the backstory for the game. How you got here. And then finally, how it's about to get worse. It's an instant scenario generator, right? How it's about to get worse. You seem to be shrinking. The cackling old lady unfolds a scaffolding of bone, leather, and razor blades. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what you can do is lay out three of these cards, shuff, you know, shuffle them up, lay out three of these cards as uh, as the GM, and you can run a game with uh, interesting, spontaneous premise right there on the spot. Uh, given like, okay, well, this is the backstory. This is uh, this is the current location where we are, and then how it's about to get worse obviously introduces an element of suspense or uh, danger to the scenario that's happening, right? Uh, that's, all, that's all good. The other way that I have seen these cards used, or at least I, I, I talked to somebody at Gamehole Con about the way that he DMs with these cards, is he lays these cards out, but he lays them out secretly behind his DM screen. Yes, it's not my fault. I'm fantastic. There's also it's not my fault cards, which have more of a steampunkish kind of uh, of flair to them. I also have those. The other way that you can use these cards you can start with where where are you now? You can start with okay, everybody, you are atop the back of a great behemoth as it proceeds inevitably forward. You are riding atop the Tarrasque. It seems intent upon destruction of everything in front of you. And yet you sit in the saddle, completely unscathed by the mayhem around you as it chomp, 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 slowly works its way forward, right? Okay. Uh, there is not an app for that. There is a, um, there's a website I don't remember, but I believe uh, Randy Est um, made a web, amazing rando on Twitter, made a website for it that has a lot of this in it. 
So look, do a Google search for It's Not My Fault or It's Not My Fault, I'm Fantastic Generator. And it has, I think there might be like one or two bugs in it. Uh, it's a, As far as I know, it's a JavaScript app. So if, you, if you're online, you can do it. So you can use the now card to set the scene. And then you can pull a what brought you to this for the complication the complication that might uh, might happen next and then you can use a, how it's about to get worse like where where the third act of the adventure is right so essentially the idea is that you use these cards to help guide you as the dm uh through the scenario so i would know you start in the back of a uh, large behemoth and I treat that as like okay well this is the problem you're on top you're stuck on top of this trask you, you can't ride it it's 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 you know it's worming its way toward the inevitable pit of the abyss or whatever you don't want to stay on, on top of it um, I might know that then in chapter two okay what brought you to this is my chapter two card so once they solve like okay we got to get down off of the trask or whatever right what brought you to this? A glowing fist has emerged from the ground, holding a platinum blade. Okay, cool. I know that that's what scene two is all about. So when then I ex when I um, when I finally explore that scene and get that done with, I I have I have my how it's about to get worse card. This is the climax of our adventure. Sunrise is too far away. Okay. Well, I pull all three three of these cards in advance, and then I I have a framework. <clears throat> Let me know if this sounds too loud. It looks like I'm peeking out a little bit. But I have a framework here for, I know that if I put those three things together, they're going to get off the Tarrasque. They're going to meet some sort of ghostly knight, perhaps, is what's been su su uh, suggested here. There'll be a role-playing scene. Sunrise is too far away. That suggests that the Tarrasque is out to devour the sun. Okay? So now I've got... I've got my, and their job is to stop it from devouring this, to save the sun, right? Great. Well, I've got an entire adventure now just by laying three cards out. You can use Fate Accelerated for this, you know, that, <laughs> ret that ret book retails for five bucks. Um, uh, Randy also, speaking of Randy Est, um, did these turn tracker cards. I don't know if you've ever seen these used. I'm sure, Mike, you have but it has ready for action and I've gone and then it also, sorry, and I'm done. It also has cards for minions, lackeys, big bad guy, other big bad guys, flunkies. Yeah, more ready for action cards. You can get those at DriveThruRPG as well. They're called the turn tracker action, turn tracker cards. <clears throat> Active player, pass that around. So that's it. That's, you know, you can run fate so lightweight and so quick, and there's so little paperwork involved. Uh, it, it's it's very narrative and fluid. I think I think fate makes a great all-purpose pickup game when you just want to sit down and kick something out. And I think that it's not my fault. I'm fantastic cards, especially if you use them in this way, where if you're not if you're not a superstar improv GM, like obviously all of this relies on the fact that you have improvisational skills, right? But uh, if you're if if you lay those three cards out and you're like, okay, well this is when that's played out, I don't know what to do next. Well, number one, you could just draw a couple more cards of from the it could how it's going to get worse. But I like the idea that you lay the three the, the three of them out in secret, and now you have a framework for the adventure in front of you. And we came up with this cool thing where it's like, oh, I'm riding a Tarrasque into the sun. Like, that's our game. I wouldn't have come up with that, like, just off the top of my head. That sounds awful. <laughs> I wouldn't want to... I would, I would love to play in that, but I also wouldn't want to play in that. You know what I mean? But laying those three cards out, like, now I see, like, there's room for... The, there's room for the GM to start making connections between what's happening and what's coming forward and start foreshadowing elements and that sort of thing. Um, there's also room for the players to make discoveries that the GM has, you know, cleverly seeded in the preceding scene. 
So I think that approach to using those cards is relatively in ingenious. And I'm trying to remember the Twitter handle of the... Beloren Fox is the guy on Twitter who came up with this. So all, uh, all kudos to him. I, 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 I hung, out him, hung out with him at GameholeCon last year and he talked about this. It was a really great idea. All right. <clears throat> Mike says, my favorite fate trick is to treat NPCs as though they're just challenges and make it diceless for the GM. Their challenge level equals their stress boxes. <laughs> I mean, fate is eminently hackable, right? And I think there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of ways to... Uh, yeah, this is, this is a... There's a lot of ways to, to, to hack it and, like, and cut to the heart of, of whatever scene you're trying to get to, right? You don't have to worry about whether that thing has 15 hit points or 50 hit points or whatever. It's like, like there are ways to, you can cut, cut the corners on fate without people feeling like you're busting and breaking the system. Yeah, so this is at Drive-Thru RPG. You can order these as print-on-demand things from Drive-Thru drive RPG. And while you're there, I would suggest getting the turn tracker cards. I, 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 I enjoy them for popcorn style um, initiative if you play any of the Cortex games. I used it for my Marvel Super Heroes game um, uh, during the Alzheimer's marathon, and I thought it worked super well. I really... It's it's it, it's a very nice, handy um, visual reference for you. I mean, you, you can also just use... You can also just use index cards if you want, right? But uh, if you're going to pick up some cool game aids and they're not particularly expensive, go for it. All right. Uh, I'm happy to go off on some tangents here, so this is fine. I don't need to talk about any of these things in depth other, other than kind of what's on my shopping list. I do want to highlight a few things that I'm looking forward to. But that doesn't mean that we have to have, um, you know, that's, that doesn't mean that we're not, we don't have time to take some questions. <clears throat> the other thing I will say on, related to the topic of like playing a, playing a pickup game is I tweeted about this earlier today, but uh, Games on Demand is a terrific way to show up, see what the sort of smorgasbord of options is out there, and oftentimes there's indie games that are being offered, things that you wouldn't normally play, things that are off the beaten path. If you want to get into a D&D game, you can find a D&D &D game to get into, right? You can find an Adventures League, you know, or whatever game to play. But, I suggest you go to the con and try something new because unless you are trying to like really get some of the con exclusive juice out of playing your Adventurers League character, you can play D&D kind of at home at your game shop or whatever, hopefully. If you can't, go play D&D, great. Play, play Pathfinder or whatever. Those things are all super fun and fine. But... If you want to get exposed to new games and you don't want don't have somebody in your group who is willing to take the time to learn and watch and figure it out, etc., then go play games on demand and jump into that game of fiasco or whatever it is and learn Dungeon World from somebody who's GM'd it before. So games on demand is a terrific place to go and just pick up a game. It you know doesn't you don't have to make plans. You can kind of jump in when you when you want to jump in, assuming that they're not sold out. Um, so it it adds some flexibility to your schedule. If you end up shopping a little bit longer than you wanted to, or you find out that like oh we got out of lunch a little bit late and we we missed that start of whatever slot, like Games on Demand has a pretty regular churn on it in terms of getting stuff started. So. Uh, so that's, that's uh, something to consider, is go to the Games on Demand area. James V., I think to answer the question that you, you pushed over to Christian, I believe that there is an offline mode that is going to be released later, and I think that's rolled into the price for the new D&D Beyond product. <clears throat> so... James V says, great point. My first game hole con was an all Cypher System Numenera Strange weekend. I never had a chance to play it before, and it made for a great experience. I will say, I went to Big Bad Con, and we did games on demand. 
my wife was doing something and I hadn't signed up for something, I don't know, like, we, for whatever reason, Lindsay and I had a lot of miscommunication about, like, what games we were going to play at Big Bad Con. And I found, like, she was, she got into a game that she wanted to play, but there was only one spot or I wasn't interested in playing it or whatever. So I went to Games on Demand. I played maybe the best cyberpunk game I've ever played, which um, was run by a guy named Colin. And it was a Power by the Apocalypse hack that he had done called Tears and Kisses in the Rain. And his point, his point of view is that cyberpunk, we always want to make cyberpunk about the gear and the tech and the mission and the ice and the hacking and the black ops and the cybernetics and all that kind of stuff, right? All of the like really kind of like sexy combat type of stuff. And his point is that cyberpunk is not cyber, it's punk. So it needs to be about blood and death and disappointment and love and rejection and tragedy and, you know, fighting your way off the street and out of this godforsaken city which has ground the life out of you, right? <clears throat> so that's um and and it's it's you know i'm i'm hoping to showcase that uh at some point uh when he kind of gets a, a a playable beta together to that's that that he's happy with and ready to kind of release as a general like hey strange people can play this whatever so i will say i've had i've had some great experiences with games, games on demand i can't vote for every single one of the obviously but there you go <clears throat> uh, it was a terrific cyberpunk game, and, uh, and and when I get the chance, I'm gonna run it for you guys on stream. So, all right, all right, yeah, we're we're all over the place today. I'm not gonna go super long on the stream because I do have to pack. I'm kind of waiting for my agent to email me. <clears throat> so, but whatever. <clears throat> So, so I, I, it's one of those things, if my agent emails me with good news, then it's bad news for my travel plans. But uh, if they don't email me, which they, it's 2.30 at this point, then I need to hustle and get everything in my suitcase. All right. The numbers. Gen Con sold out. It's huge. It's, I, I, I don't know the official number. I'm guessing it's about 75,000. You know, they've been pushing 70 for the past few years, and I'm guessing that somewhere 75 80,000 as they've maxed out their their attendance at the venue their ability to host people at the venue that's um that's possible i don't know it's going to be slammed so that means all of the usual things which means uh i think i think they'll probably have line management under control you know i expect badge pickup to actually go relatively okay, but who knows what it's going to be like Thursday morning. <clears throat> be a little patient. Uh, that also means all the businesses during peak meal times are going to be slammed. All of the food trucks are going to be slammed at peak meal times, right? You may think, I'm just going to, oh, I'll just run out to the food truck and grab something quick. Those people get backed up. The lines at the food truck can last 45 minutes or an hour. So have that in mind. And there's, there's two sides to that. One is be prepared to have to wait and be okay with waiting. Number two is when it's your time to leave, leave. Don't camp out a table and be the jerk who is squatting on a place and they're just sitting around like basically taking a rest break. You can find a place, any, you can find someplace else that's not burning some woman on tips or burning some dude on tips or whatever because you're tired and you want to take a break and just drink coke <clears throat> like you can find a place to do that at the convention center trust me so so be a considerate consumer on both sides that sort of brings us over well look so let's talk a little bit about etiquette right there's just a couple highlights that i want to hit which is we already talked about have some patience right <clears throat> important show some consideration but also in terms of showing some consideration like okay we're going to clear out here <clears throat> and as savage scott says 
Consider taking a stroll to a more distant restaurant versus the one right across the street. You're helping yourself, you're helping them, you're helping everybody else. <clears throat> uh, and James V points out, be nice to the service people. They're working hard to feed you. I, From what I can tell anecdotally, the service people like nerds. Like, we are good consumers for them. We tip well, we're fairly polite, we're not jerks, okay? Keep that reputation up. Don't get too full of yourself and get carried away with having your fun at the expense of your waiter or waitress or server. Or there we go. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. <clears throat> Ooh, gotta watch some ads here. All right, so. All right, sorry about that, everybody. Um, so, on the one hand, be accepting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, be, be accepting of people who don't necessarily like fit how you and your friends behave. Uh, also, don't be an a-hole. Don't, uh, you know, don't make snarky remarks about the cosplayers and whatnot. Nobody cares about what your boner thinks about how somebody looks in their cosplay dress. Uh, good, bad, or otherwise, like, that's fine. That's, you know, if you need to have those opinions, you can have them in your hotel room with your friends back where nobody else needs to hear them because, let's be honest, nobody else needs to hear them. Um, those people really work hard on getting dressed up for the con, and even if they don't work hard, they're putting more effort into it than you probably are, so there's that. All right. <clears throat> Cosplay is not consent. Just, like, ask for a photo. And if they agree to a photo, just please pull off to the side. Don't stop in the middle of the hallway. All right. So that's that's etiquette. Um, James V. talked some stuff about uh, packing. And um, I'll tell you what... Uh, I, I can scroll back in my phone here. I had to pull it up on my phone. Yeah, a kit of cords and batteries or chargers. Uh, using a shoulder bag, Savage Scott W says use a shoulder ba bag, uh, and that's nice. You know, it doesn't. You don't have that weird. I've used a shoulder bag, and I, I like that too. <clears throat> uh, so, so there's ways to keep it. The number one thing I will say about packing is pack less than you think you need. You need paper. You need writing implements. You need dice, maybe. You're probably going to buy dice there. And then, do you really need a copy of the rules? Do you? Do you really need a copy of the rules? If you're running something, maybe. If you can fit that stuff on your tablet, take your tablet. Pack light. You're going to buy so much... <laughs> I don't know, if you're like me, you're going to be tempted to buy so much stuff that carrying that around plus all of your rule books, just a burden. That time you spend looking up spells is like out of a play session, maybe 10 minutes out of four hours. Somebody else probably has one at the table. So don't pack all of your rule books. Bring your dice, bring a notebook, bring a pencil, bring a miniature or two, and maybe bring like a couple like campaign coins to use as tokens for stuff. But yeah. And as Christian Linky points out, you can FedEx or UPS stuff back home, right? So if you get if you if your suitcase gets full, just make a stop, make a stop at your FedEx office door. It's another what, twenty bucks to send all that stuff home. You're gonna spend twenty five on your suitcase anyhow. So keep that in mind. That's that's kind of packing both ways. Um. So we've talked. 
I really love to have an... Uh, well, let me go get it. No, that's not fair, but... But I love to have a, a USB portable brick with me. Dare I say, bring two of them because you may end up draining one, and then you can that one. The other one can be recharging at your hotel room while you're using the other one. These things get a little heavy, but when your phone, if your phone has battery issues, there's going to be a lot of signal getting eaten there. Um, having two is not a bad idea. They're getting you know, it's twenty or thirty bucks on Amazon. All right. So those are, those are those are some basic packing tip tips. Uh, I, I I linked to an article earlier in the week that had stuff over. I think it was on Geek Dad that had some tips, some great tips about bring an extra shirt with you. you can, trading shirts, just a little like putting a little deodorant on and tra changing shirts really can help your life feel better. Changing socks will also make your life feel better. Wear comfortable shoes. All of this stuff is sort of no nonsense. Like. Uh, common sense 101 stuff that I've covered previously but is worth saying right so those things the other thing that I thought was a great tip from there was bring your own own badge holder if you have one if you have a, a badge holder that is comfortable that you like wearing it's probably better than the string thing that the con is going to provide right so yeah and the humidity can be bad I haven't looked at what the um I haven't looked at what the forecast is. Let's look now. Mm, no, I'm not going to look it up on the stream. <laughs> Polos made of wicking material. Yeah, that's not that's <laughs> that's not a bad idea either. Um, I always find it's a great opportunity to get my um, nerd t-shirts, get the most mileage out of my nerd t-shirts. But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, being comfortable is also important. And I also have to say. It's, it's important to have a couple outfits that aren't just strictly like nerd gear, right? You're, there, there may be a night where you want to go out to eat, or you may not want to wear that on the plane or whatever. All right. <clears throat> so socks, ha having a, just having an extra a shirt available sometimes. There's that one day where you're like, oh, this, this is a lot worse, and you're just going to feel better. I'll tell you, like, I've been at the con where it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and somebody's already been up for three hours, and they, their shirt is just pitted out. You got another solid eight hours of the con to go for sure. Uh, having a water bottle is not a bad idea. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that transitions to let's talk about self care, right? Don't just rely on your caffeine drinks. In fact, I would say put them off as long as you humanly can because caffeine will push you up, but then it'll drag you down. So that's not, ah, M says hello, looked up the weather for Indy, and it's thunderstorms Wednesday, then low to mid 80s the rest of the con. Yeah, it might be, <laughs> it might be a little sticky there. I always try to look spiffy at the Ennies. I will be at the Ennies. <clears throat> I will probably bring at least one They Might Be Giants t-shirt, right? That's, that's when, you know, you want to show that you're not any ordinary nerd. I'm not. I'm not going to the concert and I feel like a bad fan, you guys. I feel like a really bad fan. <clears throat> uh, yes, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate with water. Water, absolutely. And, you know, you can also get those little Mio flavored water things. If you're not like, I don't want to drink tap water. Like, you can get regular water and then add a little juice to it. Whether that's the energy carbonated one or just one that's flavoring, you can do that. And it'll make the water taste like something sweet if that's what you have uh, a craving for right so that's fine so yes drink a lot of water you're going to be on your feet you're going to be pushing your body you're probably not going to have as much sleep as you want you're going to be sweating more than you expect it's going to be a taxing situation yes yes what yeah So, so drink plenty of water. Get plenty of fluids in there. Please do that. The other thing, take a look at what I've got. I went to Trader Joe's today and got a uh, bag of bags. <laughs> so these are this is just a little trail mix individual pouch pouches that are packaged. The great thing about this is if I want to share, 
I can just fling somebody a packet. Here you go. Enjoy. Have fun. Need a little pick me up? There you go. <laughs> you know, I don't have to. They don't have to have them reaching their hand into my bag of snacks, which. Not to be a nerd about it, but nobody wants con crud, and that's ways that you get it. Your friend reaches into your bag of snacks, but they had just shaken hands with somebody who had just shaken hands with, somebody who they had just shaken hands with. It's really tough, especially at an RPG convention where a lot of people play like Magic the Gathering and stuff, or share dice, like... Touch your nose, touch your eyes, and then pick up the cards, and then just pass the cards around or whatever, right? So think about that. M says hello uh, shares a great trick, which is you can reuse your soda bottle. Once it's empty, you can put water back into it. I I know everybody complains about how expensive the con food is or whatever, but generally, just, as long as you don't buy the trash stuff, it's worth paying a couple extra bucks for the convenience. Yes, water shouldn't cost $5. Would you rather have $5 and be thirsty and tired, or would you not have $5 and at least, like, get some water and you get hydrated, etc.? right? Like, I get being on a budget, but sometimes I feel like nerds, like, are so tight with their money that they get a little bit kind of save a penny to pay a pound kind of situation. So that's one thing. For me personally, also, uh, roasted cashews, I get the lightly salted ones, the super salty ones, they make me feel crappy, right? I just, I get too kind of like bloated and my eyes don't work right. And so I, I want lightly salted instead of unsalted, right? But that's, that's more for like a me snack. Or if you gotta share, pour some out on a paper towel or a napkin or whatever. Think about bringing some paper towels. Think about bringing hand sanitizer, wipes, whatever. Protein bars. Okay, there's a theme here, which was when your blood sugar gets low, you start not to think so good. Okay, well that's fine, except that this game is all about thinking, right? <clears throat> so, bring some protein bars. No sugar, low sugar, high protein, sticks with you for a while keeps the furnace burning when you need it to keep burning. Finally, just because I'm a fanatic about this stuff, I like gum. Mmm, gum. Don't spit it out on the sidewalk. Find a trash can when you're done with it. But, we can't all go and brush our teeth every time we have a snack. The bathrooms are going to be too slammed for that. Um, consider bringing a little portable toothbrush or whatever, right? Those are all some self-care things. But also, just mentally, check in with yourself. Check in with your friends. Are you tired? Do we need to take a break? I'm done for a while. I'm just going to sit and read. I'm going to sit and not do anything. I'm going to watch <clears throat> the crowd for a little bit. There's always interesting people watching going on at Gen Con, right? So, consider that. So, that's self-care. Um, we also talked earlier a little bit <laughs> Christian Linky points out that uh, there are grocery stores in Indy, so you can buy this when you are there. There's one within walking distance. I'm not sure where it is. I've never actually been in that grocery store. Yeah. Part of me kind of getting psyched up for Gen Con is like planning, like, what snacks am I going to bring? But I'm with you 100%. I have, I'm have i staying with friends, so I almost just like Amazoned them this stuff. For me, it's part of the like the packing ritual. Uh, yeah, I haven't. So, Savage Scotch says I use those Listerine strips, the tiny little packets. Those things are cool. What I like, <laughs> what I like, and what I don't like about the ice cubes gum is it's fairly tacky, and by that I mean like adhesive. So if you have stuff stuck in your teeth, it generally gets it out. I've certainly had stuff where like I had like some really like like a like a beef sandwich or whatever and those little like threads of meat get stuck in your molars and I can get it out if I choose chewing some gum and I would rather do that than sit there and like pluck away with a with a floss and toss thing, right? So all right, that's self care. Games. I don't have a lot to say about this, um 
<clears throat> because there's so many options, and I don't feel like I can tell you what you should be playing, right? Uh, what I would encourage you to do, as I mentioned previously, go to Games on Demand and play something that you haven't played before. Go to the, when you walk the floor, carve some time out to play some demo games at the booths. Be respectful of those people and of their time and of their attention and their, you know, that the fact that it's their job. But I think Gen Con is a great way to kind of like feel the pulse of the industry and what everybody thinks is cool this year and what's exciting. <clears throat> and you're not going to be able to discover everything that is actually cool and exciting and whatnot. But... You, you will be able to find those little treasures that work for you. <clears throat> so, go play some games on demand, some stuff that you wouldn't normally play. Play some demo stuff and find some stuff. Oh, I like this. I don't like this. Oh, maybe maybe my gaming group at home would like this. Even if it's board games and things like that. <clears throat> right? Oh, mm -hmm. It's joining the fight here, everybody. <clears throat> so, that's... That's one thing. You can play... Organized play if you're so inclined to just show up and kind of play some uh, some traditional RPGs and whatnot. <clears throat> I think you know there's there's an opportunity to play the stuff that's not traditional. But if you want to if you want to do that or that, like that's what you can talk your buddies into, I get it. That's fine. I will say like there have been occasions where you can sign up for basically sort of like an adventure path at Gen Con, and it's you and the same group of players and the same DM, and you play five sessions, five games in a row over the course of like two or three days at the con. I don't necessarily recommend that. If you don't like your DM, you're stuck with them for the next four sessions. If you don't, if your play style doesn't jive with one or two of the other people in the group, you're stuck with them. I've met some, uh, super fun people that I've gamed with at Gen Con. And I've also sat at a table and been annoyed with people where their play style just isn't compatible with mine. And it's always easier to follow up and find a new game with somebody that you met at the table. It was like, hey, do you, you know, we're going to go play this. Do you want to join in or whatever? Um, but it's it's nice to have the ability to walk away from a table and go, I don't, think I, I don't know what that guy was thinking. And just be able to like, okay, well, we're moving on from that. Savage Scott says, I rarely get chances to actually play while I'm there. I'm just too dang busy. But I signed up to play an old favorite RPG from the 80s because how often do you get to do that in a con setting? And that, you know, I would agree, like... You can also play some old school stuff that you just didn't necessarily get to play before. My favorite con for that is Game Hole Con. But the other reason I struggle like to give you advice on this topic is number one, like the number of events that are being offered is overwhelming. And I can't speak to each and every one of your play styles or you know what your purpose is in going. Number two, I just don't play much of anything at Gen Con because it's become more of a working con for me, right? So for those of you who aren't aware, like, I'm hosting NASCRAG, which is the National Society of Crazed Gamers, and we run a very role-playing heavy, story-heavy Pathfinder tournament. It's a two-round tournament, so there's qualifying rounds Thursday and Friday at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m., another final qualifier Saturday at 1 p.m., and then Saturday night at 7 o'clock, we have our final round. We take the top 12 teams or so and throw them in the final, and then they're scored and there's prizes and all that sort of fun stuff. But it really is not a hack-and-slash type of Pathfinder game. It's not about, like, maxi-torquing the rules to overcome the evil lich. It is far more about, like, who's the best who does a really great job of committing to their zany, goofy character and solving puzzles and using your head to get through the series of events as opposed to exploration, combat, dungeon crawling type of things, right? 
So, so that's NASCAR. That's they've been around. For, I think this is our thirty fourth year. I think I played in it like the the first or second year that I went. I don't remember. I played in it for a long time, and then eventually uh, graduated on to become the uh, their the host. I probably won't be running any sessions, but I, I, I will be the host. So that's the other part of it is it's a working con for me. So I can't say, like, I always do this. I always play in that. I always make sure. I don't always make sure. <laughs> uh, that's fine. You know, I, I, I've, I've, I've leveraged my super fandom into a different uh, aspect of the industry, and that's the way things are for me. So that's that's my Gen Con, right? That's that's things that are different for me. But play something you wouldn't play. My number one piece of advice. This is your big chance. And and it's your big chance to play it with somebody who maybe created that game or has played that game a lot and really loves it. Um Christian Linky says, I was trying to play this stuff I haven't had a chance to play before. Got to play Tunnels and Trolls with Ken St. Andre and other amazing things. Do the things you can't do anywhere else. And that's that's true, right? <clears throat> um, uh, there's so many things at Gen Con that you can't do someplace else. Like play in a tournament or play one of those old school events or play a brand new game that just came out or whatever. Or do True Dungeon, right? I always look at this as an opportunity to break the mold of whatever I've, I've been doing with my regular gaming group and go do something brand new. I mean, you, there's also entertainment, right? Like, there's also the people that you um, meet uh, online or that you watch doing actual plays and stuff like that. We're all going to be there for the most part, right? So if you want to meet the Saving Throw crew, you can meet us <laughs> at Gen Con. If you want to you know, at least see Critical Role live. There's a good chance you can go do that. <clears throat> so, it's four days. It's, well, Sunday is really just a shopping day. <clears throat> it's three days packed end-to-end -end with a huge variety of interesting gaming events. Make, make your con pick and choose things that are events and not just games. All right. Uh, S. Del Castillo says, One of the people in my game group is running stuff for Contessa, Dungeon World, and Scenic Dunsmouth. <clears throat> so if you get a chance, go do Contessa. Absolutely. <clears throat> M says, Hello, there's the exhibit hall, panel seminars, seeing friends from opposite coasts, <laughs> killing them, <clears throat> killing their characters. I mean, that is also one of the fun things, is like, when like when I played in NASCAR over and over and over again, you'd start to see the same people. Obviously, it was the same staff who was running it, and that's how I became friends with those people. So you can, if you go over and over again, build bonds that kind of like, especially with the internet, we can finally have that face-to-face -face time with people that we only know virtually or online. All right. <laughs> yeah, the bloom is off the rose once you meet me in person. I will be there in my Dungeon Bastard regalia, for the most part. there may I may be stalking around as a civilian for a little bit when I'm doing shopping and stuff like that. But I will be there in my Dungeon Bastard regalia, so if you want a photo with the Dungeon Bastard, this is one of your two chances here in Gamehole Con. So, so dial that in. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the games that are on my particular radar in terms of <clears throat> what my wish list, my shopping list is for um, <clears throat> uh, 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 I'm not sure what James V is is up for, but <clears throat> um, some things that are on my radar in terms of things that I personally am interested in looking at uh, and picking up at the con. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run through some of the things that I actually have already, but that are going to be available there, right? So, uh, if, yeah, I'm just going to go from the top of the pile to the bottom of the pile. Uh, Monster Hearts 2, if you're not familiar with Monster Hearts, it is, uh, <laughs> it, it is sexy teen vampire werewolves in high school having a high school drama. 
It is a played by the apocalypse uh, driven game system, and uh, the Kickstarter for this just delivered. I want to say in the past month or so. You can go to the Indie Press Revolution booth and check this out if you are so inclined. Uh, it is about all kinds of things, you know, sexuality. Yeah, you know, I just I love I love I love teen games because or, or teen focused games because. There's such a it's such a dynamic time for like secrets and discovery and forming who you are or discovering who you are, you know, deceit to others, deceit to yourself, you know, ranging all the way from lying about what time you got home last night to like lying to yourself or others about what your your gender identity is or your sexual orientation is or whatever, right? Um, and so, and, and so, Monster Hearts uh, tackles head on the issues, all of those issues, basically like you know, explosive relationships and kind of the crucible that is high school, but adds a touch of fantasy with mon these monster tropes, right? That that you do 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 do. Where's the character types here? Da 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 da. I haven't. I said in the back, like the vampire, the queen, the mortal, the infernal, that sort of stuff. If you haven't checked it out, I think it's worth checking out. That's it in the Indie Press Revolution booth. Uh, also, there, this is pretty. Um, it's got a lot of juice. There's a lot of actual plays that you can go watch of. This is Blades in the Dark. This is the special edition of Blades in the Dark. If you were not a Kickstarter backer and you're interested in getting the Blade Special Edition, which has this custom cover. Yes! With 2338. Thank you very much. Um, and has a whole extra chapter on Uduasha, uh, a, a city in the desert. So it's a different different city guide besides Doskvul. <clears throat> uh, that is... this. There's a limited number of these copies that were basically done... Uh, as an overrun to protect against, like, oh, if there was a damage, we'd have to replace it or whatever. <clears throat> Indie Press Revolution is going to have a limited number of these that you can buy from them, the, the special edition. Otherwise, it's only available through the Kickstarter. This obviously is a... a I don't know if it's obvious. This w was produced... This is a John Harper game. was produced by Evil Hat, right? So again, like, my standard disclaimer, I do social media for Evil Hat, so... Whatever. <clears throat> um, that's colors my worldview. I paid for this book out of my own pocket. I was not provided a complimentary copy or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but if you want the special edition, go to booth 2338 and go get one because I don't expect they're going to last very long. If you just want the standard edition, go get that one. But Blades is definitely a game that I'd like to get on Saving Throw Show sometime soon. The other... There's two other Evil Hat titles that are coming out or that are going to be at the Indie Press Revolution um, booth that I think you should be aware of. Uh, one is the Dresden Files Accelerated. If you're a fan of Dresden Files, I suggest you go get that book. It's basically, it's the, the fate skin. It is a much more condensed, streamlined, straightforward, and up-to-date version of the Dresden Files RPG in one solid compact little um, package and yes they have the Dresden Files full RPG the three volumes of it I think there you know there's some street there's some streamlining that's been done in Dresden Files Excel uh, accelerated and also the timeline is caught up with the timeline of the books so it and also this got great presentation like I mean Evil Head does great stuff and I would say that regardless um, so if you are a fan of the Dresden Files universe, or you are interested in doing, like, a modern fantasy kind of noir mystery game, right? Check out, um, check, check out Dresden Files Accelerated. The other book, which I don't have a copy of either, uh, that comes out on Thursday is the Fate Adversary Toolkit. And you may say to yourself, ah, I'm not really into fate. I don't really get it. I don't, I don't want to play it. I like something that's a little more crunchy or whatever it is. That's fine. That's cool. 
this book does a great job of categorizing oppositional forces that you can introduce into your game whether it's you know the burly bruiser type of villain the mastermind or it can be obstacles like environmental obstacles introducing a countdown a ticking time bomb type of scenario or whatever it is so I think this book is really useful in terms of giving you an idea when you're sitting down going, all right, what kind of challenge can I throw at my players? Giving you inspiration of like, these are high level bucket categories uh, that you can drill into to help inspire you in creating your game. So those are two titles that I don't have here, but the Fate Adversary Toolkit uh, is something that I would recommend if you're a GM, no matter what system. In fact, Mike Shea, if you're still out there, which you probably aren't, I think you'll want to look at that for your GMing advice. <clears throat> also, I think this is, I mean, this is the, it'll definitely first time be available at the con, but this Jade Colossus book for Numenera by Bruce Cordell is the latest title in the Numenera line. And... <clears throat> Again, like I, everybody knows I'm a Monty Cook fanboy, but their production, their art production and layout and design is so gorgeous in here for number one. And then number two, it, it, it's an entire campaign setting that has some fun knobs and dials that you can kind of turn on this thing. And whether you use it for Numenera or not, you can use it to inspire a Numenera style campaign because they have this whole rune mapping engine that Bruce did. Um, and that's, it, it's just got some, some nice mechanical chunks to it that I think allow you to do some sort of, I find it inspirational, let's put it that way, right? <clears throat> All, I always turn to uh, Money Cook Games, when I'm like, well, what's a little, what's a little, what's the, what's the weird tentacle sci-fi twist on this without being ooky? <clears throat> so, I think they do terrific science fantasy stuff. So, Jade Colossus, not available in any of the Kickstarter packages if you didn't, you know, if you backed one of their get every book that comes out in 2017, you're not getting this book. This is their own independent, um, it's an independent release. But Bruce does great work with this. I would re recommend you at least stop by the booth and take a look at it. <clears throat> also available at the Indie Press Revolution book is Carthoon. We've talked about Carthoon before. <clears throat> Brian came and ran a game for us. This is definitely like one of those books that is 100% system neutral. It is certainly intended for a fantasy style game. Now, whether that's Savage Worlds, whether that's D&D or Pathfinder, whether that's Fate, whatever you want to use it for, that's what this is intended for. It's a world of, of epic fantasy where things are going wrong. So, if you didn't back the Kickstarter <clears throat> and haven't gotten your copy, then you can again stop at Indie Press Revolution and pick that up. <clears throat> so those are things that I already have that are going to be available at the con for the first time this year that I recommend you check out. The, I, I wrote down some other things here in my little list. So, <clears throat> I am interested in the new Star Trek game from, I think it's from Modiphius, right? <clears throat> the new Star Trek game looks interesting to me. I'm not sure. I have, I have, a, I have some friends, they're big into sci-fi and their daughter is really getting into Star Trek. She's kind of like, gone from Harry Potter to Star Wars and is now crossing over into Star Trek, you know, kind of like as the various pools of media get used up, you go and drink from a different well. It seems like the Star Trek game, they did a, they did a really good job. Um, Savage Scott says, The Book of the Righteous for 5e will be at Gen Con and is a must-buy. <clears throat> So, uh, I've, I backed that on Kickstarter. That should be coming. I'm interested in that. That was, like, one of the classic uh, 
builds a pantheon of gods type of books for third edition, and I'm uh, eager to see it come back to uh, uh, fifth edition. So I'm going to stop by the Green Ronin booth regardless, because I'm also interested in the Tal'Dorei um, campaign setting from Critical Role. Like, that's blown... Like, they they did so many pre-orders on that, they quit taking pre-orders on that. So I think that's going to be a hot one at the con to try and get a hold of. The FedEx guy, or the UPS guy, is stalking his way towards my door. So that one, that one, I'm definitely like, I want to check out that and see if I can get a copy of the Critical Role campaign setting. I think that will be good. I don't know if I need to... I think I might have to sign for this. Hang on. Oh, no. He walked away. All right, great. <clears throat> so... <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious about the, the, the Star Trek game. I'm, I'm curious about the Tal'Dorei setting. Uh, like I said, I have friends who are, are running a, or who, who love sci-fi, and my buddy wants to GM a Starfinder campaign, so I'm going to pick up a copy of Starfinder. I'm interested to see what Paizo has done with Pathfinder and how it's changed and what their take on a, a sci-fi game is. So I'm planning to get that, because I'm probably going to be playing in that. I'm, anytime I get a chance to play, that's... It's a nice opportunity, right? <laughs> uh, so there's that. Um, I think I'm also going to pick up Tales from the Loop from Modiphius. The, the, the quote-unquote Stranger Things game. The 80s kids action game. I think... I looked at the Kickstarter and I didn't back it, and I kind of regret it. Although, you know, let's be honest, we all have more games that we can possibly have hours in the day to, to play, right? Um, so, so when I looked at the Kickstarter and I was like, I just wasn't sure about the rule system, but I did a little checking around, and it looks like it's actually fairly fond and fast and flexible. More importantly, I think that Lindsay would like playing that game and 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 as has become evident like lately i'm on this huge kick of like games where you are you play as as teens and kids right it allows you to incorporate some of the goofier aspects of role playing and yet it's plausible uh and there's only a couple other things that are no don't delete on my list the other thing a BMMB figure? Fuck what, I'm not sure what a BMMB figure is. Um, so, the guys over at Inkwell Ideas, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember, but wow, way back in the way back of Disorganized Play, <clears throat> I had their Monster Manual cards, their little organized, you know, little stat cards, where it has all of the essential stats for that monster put on one playing card size piece. You get a whole... Oh, Burger Meister Meister Burger. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and as DJ Regular points out, everybody's been a kid, so you can always slip back to that, that mindset. <laughs> you can be the best, best worst version of yourself. <clears throat> uh, so the... The folks over at Inkwell Ideas have a couple of things that I really like. One of them is they have little, like, village mapping cards. So you, they're, they're, ge they're village geomorph maps, and you, f you can flip them over to instantly create a little village if you, if you are so inclined. They have the same thing for dungeons, where they're geomorph dungeon cards, and you can flip the tiles out and, and, and build a map as you go if you, if you want to do that. But they came out with these, you know, this deck of cards that was about yay big, and they had multiple decks of these things that had all of the monsters in the monster manual. Well, they're, they've licensed the monsters from Tome of Beasts, and they are going to have a deck of low-level creatures from the Tome of Beasts. I'm such a sucker for anything that has cards involved that I may be getting that as well. Obviously, I'm going to get some dice. That's always on the list. Um... 
And then the final thing that I'm considering getting is Pandemic, Le uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 2. We haven't finished Pandemic Legacy Season 1. I think we're in like May or June. We're about halfway through it. Um, and we had some extenuating circumstances that sort of in interrupted our playthrough of it. But I really, I'm, I'm enjoying that game. Do I need to get the Season 2 at Gen Con since we haven't finished the first one? I don't know. As Christian Linky points out, if you're going to FedEx stuff back home, you don't have to worry about what size box you got because you don't have to worry about it fitting in your suitcase. You just have to worry about making sure it's got enough cardboard around it. So, uh, that's... Uh, no, no, by all means, uh, M says hello. Please share the booth numbers for people. That's very helpful. I, I don't have time to... I, I haven't looked them up, so... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, there's... What's your must-visit booth? I also I also like to just, like, go around and see the small vendors who are offering different things, right? Like, like when I was running Monday Night Dungeon Flight, I found all of those little campfires and, you know, little drain sacks and water buckets and things like that. I found that at a little board gaming booth, and it was five bucks. And I was like, yeah, I'll get those. So... Um, so that's always always like budget some time to just do the wander through the hall. Uh, my buddies at Gamer Concepts have some some fun new T-shirts coming out. Uh, Robert Boulay is one of them. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll feature some of those in our NASCRAG prize lineup. But uh, yeah, it's hard to make a definitive list. But those are the things that are like high on my radar. <clears throat> The Indie Press Revolution book all uh, booth always has interesting, interesting stuff. Whether it's that they they're, they're going to have everything that Evil Hat carries, not everything that Evil Hat carries, but they're going to have all the highlights from Evil Hat and Fate Dice and things like that. Then they will also have a bunch of uh, small press stuff that that I always find interesting and appealing. Like last year, I got the hashtag Feminism Micro Games compilation. Uh, for my well, for my wife, but also for myself, um, and uh, Ryutama. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is like sort of like this anime, kind of Japanese anime role playing, but not in a like a Sailor Moon type of way. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I always like to 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 come home with some odd accessories, like Savage Scott says, uh, Dapper Devil gaming paper, especially. I'm sure I'll stop by and see Eric and walk home with some goodies. I love, I love that stuff, as everyone knows. So there you go. Um, yeah, we went a little over time despite my best intentions. But I think, sorry about the interruption in the middle of the stream. But that that is Gen Con 50. Uh, I, will, I will be mostly doing Nazcrag stuff. I may <laughs> stop by the Bald Man Games booth and run the... Uh, adventure that I wrote so I can see how it plays out uh, didn't get a chance to play test it and I also feel like once once I once I run it I'm sure I'm gonna have some solid ideas on how I want to trim it down edit change improve I'd like to do another pass on it before it kind of like gets officially posted to the DMs Guild so that's um, that's one thing that I may do. I will be at the Ennies on Friday night. I will be there representing Evil Hat. So if you'd like to see me in my civvies and uh, and say hi or whatever, I'm I'm happy to see you there. So um, you know, there's there's some great products in the lineup uh, all around at the Ennies. I'm always curious to see who's doing well in the popularity contest and uh, what people have submitted. And sometimes you learn some stuff about. Uh, new games that you didn't know about before and sometimes you just it's good to hang out with people in the industry and and uh, See them in a setting where they're not constantly like looking over your shoulder because they got to get to a meeting And that's the that's kind of the final note that I'll have is when you run into The game designer that that you've been a huge fan of you know for me It was you know it was certainly like Monty Cook when I first ran it and I was like wow um, 
you know, and since then we've obviously gotten to know each other and have a more uh, personal relationship. But when you run into those people like that, whether it's like Matt Mercer walking down the hall or whatever, like it, I'm sure it's okay to approach them. Generally, they don't get recognized a lot, so Gen Con is kind of a nice moment in the sun for them. Um, but just be respectful of their time, and if they have to get moving on or whatever, uh, just be considerate in that respect. Because I will tell you, for the industry people, it is a working con, and it is a place where they do a lot of business that you're not aware of. So they're on their way to hear a pitch, or to do a pitch, or to take a meeting, or talk about a licensing deal, or talk about a partnership, or what have you. And if they're not on the floor, working the booth from 10 to 6, then they're out having a meeting, making something happen for their business around those hours. So generally they're good about setting up time to like meet and greet. And obviously we have, speaking of those things, we have our saving throw panels. <clears throat> so uh, Thursday at 11, you can check out streaming RPGs for fun and profit at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Dom and the rest of the team will be there. I have a judges meeting at that point, so I'm not sure whether I will be in on that panel or not, but there'll be, you know, most of the Saving Throw show crew will be there. So you can definitely meet us there. <clears throat> uh, Friday, RPG Girls, Women in Tabletop. You know, a, a huge panel of women who stream, uh, certainly... Uh, Amy Vorpal, Havana Mahoney, and uh, uh, um, <laughs> Megan Caves Callerman will be there for that. Uh, we, and we've got a pretty good, pretty a uh, much bigger lineup for that, just other than just those three. But they will be there to talk about what it's like being a woman, uh, woman in streaming, and being a woman in tabletop, and their perspective. And I think it's important to, um, you know, not just come and show your fandom, but also come and listen to what they have to say and and uh, find out, you know, where they see, what are what appropriate boundaries are for them, and and things that, obviously, you might not consider. Like, oh, that's actually kind of skeevy when you do that, and really, and like, that's is a little weird. I don't know that it's going to be a huge, like, dissertation on etiquette in, in streaming and boundary setting, but it's nice to give them, to, to, to make, carve out time for them to give their perspective on tabletop and streaming and their place in it and how uh, it it all could be improved. I mean, we all have ideas about how it could be improved, but it's important to hear everyone else's perspective as well. <clears throat> as uh, I think Mac is on, I, I don't have the actual graphic for that in front of me. I, I can't remember if, I can't. <laughs> here's, so here's the, like the dirty secret, which is I'm so swamped with NASCRAG stuff, and that's fine, like that's the way it's been for a few years, that I, I haven't, um, I haven't carved out dedicated time and paid a ton of attention to anything else that's going on, including our own saving throw show, show stuff. So that's on my back, I'll pick that up for not knowing that stuff, but Unfortunately, that's sort of like, that's the way my Gen Con kind of currently looks, and we'll see how that goes in the future. <clears throat> Gen Con, increasingly, like, as my career kind of gets rolling, um, also becomes a situation where carving out a week in, in, the, in late August to be away from Los Angeles is getting increasingly difficult. So... I don't know. I'm not sure what, what my future Gen Cons hold, but this one for sure is uh, I'll be doing a lot of Nazcrag, maybe play a pick, or run a pickup game in the Bald Man Games area of, um, of my event and try and stop in and check in with Saving Throw as much as I possibly can. But they have sort of been uh, 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 left to their own devices, free, free of the curse of Tom Lama. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know where we go next, to be honest. I am not sure if Gen Con can move to L.A. You know, they've got a contract through 2020 with Indianapolis, and I expect them to stick to it. We bring in $75 million worth of revenue that weekend. And I don't think... I think... I don't think 
Indianapolis wants to let that go, and I think they will do whatever they can to hold on to it and accommodate it. 2017, there's, you know, what, three years left in Indy? And it depends upon how much growth there is. I think even starting last year, we started to see a backlash of Gen Con's too big, it's too much of a hassle, it's too expensive, I can't get a room, the lottery is terrible, etc., etc., etc. Estelle Castillo says Chicago is courting them. Um, James V mentions Vegas. <clears throat> um, yeah, I never went to Gen Con SoCal. I don't know what... Um, I don't know what that's going to be like. James V points out that Tracy King is going to be on the Saving Throw uh, show panel. So that's cool. And I think there's a couple of people who are not just Saving Throw people. I think I think uh, Amy Dolan, am I right? Is Amy Dolan going to be sitting in? I think there's a few other people from, like, uh, from Geek and Sundry who may be joining us there. I'm not sure. It's a little bit of a crossover. Uh, so... <laughs> Risky Pixels. It's close enough to Canada that we can go. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry about that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, I, honestly, I think Vegas or possibly you could look at Orlando. I'm not a big convention attender, so but I think of the places that are bigger than Indianapolis that have the hotel room capacity, and I think of Orlando and Vegas as the two obvious choices, and then maybe Chicago. I don't really look at Los Angeles as being a particularly viable alternative unless you had it somewhere like in Irvine or something like that, which is not Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, we will uh, we will all grouse about that choice when the day comes to pass. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for chiming in, giving your advice. I don't know... Uh, you know, your suggestions. I, I apologize for the stream getting interrupted in the middle. I just had a little internet internet hic hiccup there. A little verbal hiccup. It's time for me to have a little lunch and get to packing. But uh, since my agent has not emailed me, it looks like I'm going to Gen Con, everybody. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, that's that plan. I, if, you are, are, if you are coming to uh, Gen Con, please... Uh, Flag me down, say hello, identify who you are. I'm certainly not going to recognize you, most likely. I think James V is the only person. James and Scott and Christian are the only people in the chat that I've actually met in person. So, uh, well, no, M says hello. I've met M as well. So uh, please flag me down, say hello, but remind me of your name. I'll probably be running around a little bit like a madman, but uh, I'm always happy to see you guys, uh, see you all in person. And uh, I hope you get some good gaming in. So I will be back. I'll be tuning in, you know, chiming in on Twitter. Follow me at Dungeon Bastard. I'll certainly be giving my Gen Con, you know, reports and updates uh, as they come by. Stop by our Saving Throw Show panels. Please attend those. Please say hello to Dom and everyone else. Um, uh, uh, be kind with your praise. <laughs> you know, for a lot of, for some people, this is like their first Gen Con, so I'm sure it's going to be a little bit like nerves and pins and needles. So uh, be friendly, be gentle, be courteous. And that is just generally good advice for the con. So, uh, Risky Pixels, be the guy with the face of the thing. That's awesome. Uh, Flockwad, thank you so much for modding. As usual, thanks to everyone who joined us today. Uh, until next time. Let's dungeon! Well, you know, let's go to Gen Con and dungeon. How about that? Snark in my Twitter feed! I dare you! We'll see you in Indianapolis, everybody!